Hey guys, wow, it's really coming down today here at Nev's Garage. Anyway, if this is your first time joining us here on our channel, please hit that subscribe button and also toggle on that little bell. That way you'll be notified when the sun comes out. Uh, just kidding, you won't get notified for that, but you will get notified for our next great episode. Anyway, don't get carried away with that just now though. I've got a great episode for you this time. This is an SH9 Forester. Now from the factory they don't have a coolant temp gauge, which is just insane. All they have is an idiot light, which comes on once the engine is hot. What good is that to anyone? Absolutely none. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be installing this electronic coolant temp gauge. Right, now this is just a cheap Iluto branded gauge. Uh, the reason I chose it is because it pretty closely matches the factory gauges in the dash. Pretty similar colour I think. Uh, anyway, it's going to be a pretty simple install. It's going to have loads of benefits. So, um, let's get into it. Alright guys, so first we're going to do the mechanical side of things. So we need to put a coolant thermosensor in the system for the gauge so that it can read coolant temp. Alright, so let's do that first I reckon. Alright guys, so the easiest way to do that is just one of these inline radiator hose sensor adapters. Okay, so I've just got this generic Epman unit and got it online because it's, you know, very cost effective. It's 40mm OD to suit the Subaru radiator hoses. And we're just going to plonk him in the top hose. It's got a 1 8 NPT sensor bung as well as a little earth thread to clamp an earth lead on so that we don't get any stray current through the system. So it's really easy to fit. Just going to first of all take off this air duct. Okay, so it's real simple. Just loosen these little Phillips headed buttons and pop them out like that. Okay, out she comes. We can see our top hose there. And we're going to put the unit just here. All right. All right so next thing we're going to do is take this protective sheath off this hose here. Now the way I'm going to do that is slide this metal ruler under it so that I can cut it without any danger of cutting the actual radiator hose. So I'm going to spray the ruler with some Lanox. Why Lanox? Because it's a lanolin based lubricant and it's plastic and rubber safe. It won't rot it or swell it. I'm just going to slip that underneath hopefully. I think I might just go that far for a start. I'll get a razor blade and Slice into it, like that, beautiful, we'll go a bit further, there we go, all the way, in high school I couldn't wait to go all the way, finally I've been able to, there we go, get rid of that, there's our naked hose, just give them a bit of a clean up with a pillowcase, don't tell mum, now as you can see that Protective sheath is kind of just a aesthetic thing because it doesn't even come near to anything to protect it from, well, anything. So let's have a look at our adapter now. All right, now we're going to plonk him there, put him that way around. That way we can run a stealth earth lead just back to here somewhere. All right, next step of course is to drain the coolant out of the radiator and the engine so that we don't have coolant go everywhere. Um, so let's do that now. All right, coolant's all drained. And we're ready to cut the hose. So we're gonna do that in situ. There we go, little donut, not the kind you wanna eat. So we'll throw them away. And uh, see how our adapter fits. Just gonna put him in there, that's gonna be good. All right, let's put him in. All right, cool. So the clamps can't foul on anything. They're nice and firm. And uh, yeah, that's how it fits. So, 
All right, guys, so we're going to have to make four connections. Now, this isn't the type of connection you need to swipe right for. These are electrical connections, a lot more meaningful, okay? So we've got a plus 12 volt supply, which is our red lead on our gauge. We've got a negative 12 volt ground supply, which is our black lead on our gauge. We've got a sensor in, which reads resistance to ground in this case, which is green. And then we've got a plus 12 volt illumination wire. So the backlight comes on, which is yellow. All right, so we're gonna start with a negative 12 volt ground supply, because, well, there's a little bit more work involved in that. So let's get into that. All right, so we're gonna put this two core cable through to the engine bay. Now I'm just gonna push it through a grommet in the A pillar there. So I'm just gonna make a hole with this little pick. Lubricate the wire and push it into the void between the door and the front guard. All right, now we've got to fish it out of the cavity. All right, so a bit of old coat hanger here, a fashion with a hook on it. And what we're going to do is just put it down here and look down the door post gap. Hook it. Grab it. And there it is. All right, so I'm just gonna feed a bit more through so I'm not yanking on the end of it. All right, so we've got the combination lead through for the sensor. Now, because this sensor just reads to body ground, we're gonna merge into the side of it and pick up a body ground. So I'm gonna use this one here. This is a stud that's part of the body. So we're going to run a lead from this down and merge into the side of the loom we put through. Right, so to do that, I'm just going to put a terminal ring on the end of a black lead. All right, so... Find out which side of this is black. Follow it down. That's this side here. So I'm just going to cut the sheath away a little. Bit of heat shrink down past that spot now. Like that. Lovely. Now we're just going to Pair back the cover until we get to the wire. Now I think what I'll do is tin that area first. Alright, now we're going to leave. We're just going to strip the end of it, wind it up, and wind it around this one. Now we're going to solder up that joint. Alright, now that that's cooled a little, we're going to wrap this with some tape first to give it some extra protection against the other lead. And now our heat shrink, push it up over there, like that. Shrink that, make it look all tidy. And you just push the excess back into the body void now. All right, so let's just clean the head of that existing nut so we get a good contact against it. Like right, that. Let's put a bit of dielectric grease on, the, on it. And then we'll tighten that up. All right, there we go. A nice, sturdy earth point. 
tucked out of the way. Cool. All right, so that's uh, almost done now. We're gonna duck inside the car. Okay, so here you can see the lead that we ran through from the cabin. It goes through this body grommet up here. And what I'm gonna use is this captive thread here, this little body mount to put an extra earth on. Because the more earth, the merrier. So first of all, I'm just gonna sand that landing, get the paint off it so it makes a good connection. <laughs> all right, so that's gonna be a nice little earth position now. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just solder a ring on another lead and uh, merge it into this lead here. Um, and then uh, now earth supply is almost finished. There we go. Cool. All right, so our 12 volt ground supply, done. All right, so next we're gonna take some trims off to get to the wiring up under the dash so we can wire the rest of it up. All right, so now we can get to the fuse box and get to our power and illumination wiring. All right, so next let's do our power supply for the gauge. Now, here's the factory wiring diagram. All right, so uh, we're gonna pick up ignition switched power and I'm gonna use this one. All right, so it's uh, fuse number 11. It's one of the ignition fuses. And uh, this diagram shows us which connector it's in, what color it is. So it's orange green and it's fuse number 11. All right, now that just happens to be this fella up here, orange green. But I'll show you how we can check that we've got that right with our multimeter. All right, so we're just gonna put a red probe of our multimeter in the plug like that, back probe it. And we're just gonna pick up a very simple body ground with our black probe so I'm just going to use the mount of the bonnet latch here all right now we're going to turn this on 20 volts okay and we've got zero all right now once we put our key in our ignition and turn it to ignition so there's accessories still zero ignition and it lights up back to accessories all right, now we can check we've got the correct circuit by pulling that fuse number 11. So number 11 is here. If we just whip him out. Do the same check again. That's off. That's accessories. That's ignition, okay? Nothing, dead as a doornail. So we've got the right circuit. So that's gonna be our plus 12 volt ignition feed. All right, so what we're going to do here is just unbind this little factory loom here. Now here's the wire that I've marked, that orange-green. And uh, of course what we're going to do is just tap into the side of this. All right, so here's the diagram for our body illumination. Now this is uh, the circuitry for the, the park lights and the, um, well, all the lighting actually on this page. And this page is just specific to um, park lights, uh, rear park lights, license plate lamp, stuff like that. That's the circuit we're gonna use because it's just simple bulbs through the ground. Uh, there's no dimmer on the circuit or anything. Um, this very basic gauge doesn't include dimming, so we're not going to mess with that circuit. All right, so we're going to use this uh, this one here. We're going to come off fuse number 14. All right, through this plug. Uh, this one here, B12, which is this plug. It's an illumination wire. It comes off fuse 14. Now that one just happens to be also nice and handy. It's this one here. 
All right. And uh, what we need is a pink wire out of it. So you can see it there. And we can also test this one before we get too excited, make sure we've got the right one. Get our multimeter out again. So we're gonna back probe this pink lead this time. In there like that. Gonna pick up the same basic ground, put it on 20. All right, so we've got zero, okay? Now what we're gonna test now is if it comes on with the uh, headlights. All right, so we're just gonna show you headlights off, accessories, nothing, ignition on, nothing. And uh, you still see that? Yep, still nothing. Gonna turn it on to park lights. Bang, it goes live. Headlights still live, lights off, nothing, okay? All right, now we can check we've got the right circuit uh, by pulling out fuse 14 and trying that again. So fuse number 14, this one here, whip him out. All right, so uh, fuse out now, key in. Park lights, headlights, okay, still nothing. All right, so that's how we know we've got the right circuit. All right, so what we want to do, of course, is merge into this pink wire now. Now, what I might do to make it easy for myself is just pull this plug out of the fuse box and let it dangle. Bam. There we go, there's our yellow. So guess what? Illumination wire, done. Now we've just got this one here to go. Technically we've already done it because we ran it through with the, uh, with the ground, okay? It's part of this two core, uh, but at the moment it's red. Now, I don't want to confuse ourselves between the power and the sensor input. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip this sheath wire in half to expose the red and the black. Okay, so the black we obviously keep because that's our ground. But this red we uh, turn into green. So now we can't get confused which is the power and which is the sensor input. Cool, so that's our green, which is our sensor input. All right, so we've got all the wiring routed through now for all the different connections. So let's duck back into the engine bay and install the water temp sensor. All right, so let's just uh, see how long the wiring's gonna be. Looking out of the top a bit like that, so. All right, so we're gonna need it to come to about there. Right, so that should be plenty. Uh, that's where we'll put it. Bang. So we need to terminate this wire or these wires appropriately. But I'm also going to branch off a, another earth to earth the little temp adapter. Um, when you're reading resistance through a sensor and it's reading to earth in something like this in water, it's always good to add a, a ground um, because stray current is not your friend and this is a great way to introduce it. So here's a very comprehensive wiring diagram we get. So when it's talking about the sensor, it's saying blue to gauge as green wire, white to the vehicle ground. So in this case, we're gonna be going blue to red, down here anyway, and white to black. All right, so here's our little sensor. 
So white's a male, blue's a female. So let's crimp the terminals on now. Awesome. We better put our sensor in now. So I've got a prepped thread tape on it. So I'm going to whip out this bung now and pop the sensor in. All right, now we need to add some zip ties so that it's all secure and it can't get caught in anything it shouldn't, i.e. the fan or the belt. All right, so here's how it looks after I tidied it up. Put some conduit on there to both protect the wiring and uh, just make it look a bit tidier. Zip tied it all and um, it looks, you know, it looks nice and neat. So what we can do now is put the air duct back on. It's nice and neat now. You can hardly even see it from the top. I'll show you. Here's how it looks from the front. And you've got to really lean right over before you even see it. There it is down in there. See? I reckon that's rad. All right, so out comes the Lyle fill free funnel. All right guys, well it's time for our gauge. So here's our gauge, okay? Now here's our custom gauge cup. This is fresh off our 3D printer. I designed this to suit this specific gauge and uh, hopefully you can see in the end there, it's got uh, some inbuilt reliefs for the bolts and the uh, connector so that I can make this as short as possible. So when she slips in there, You'll see that it doesn't go all the way until it finds a spot and then clicks in like that. All right, so how cool is that? Okay, now we're gonna mount this just here. So we've got our gauge cup ready with some clear double-sided Gorilla tape. Now we need to connect our loom to our gauge. Push him in there like that. Now we feed our loom through the bottom of the gauge cup. Like that. That means all our wiring is internal and will be hidden. And I've just wrapped a bit of electrical tape around the gauge just to make it nice and snug in the housing. Okay. So as we push that gauge home now, we just need to pull the wiring through. Like that. Haha. -ha. Beautiful. All right. There we go. Okay. Pretty tidy looking unit, eh? Now, if you like this cup and you want to make your own, I will put the STL on Thingiverse and I'll link it in the description of this video. Now we're just gonna, now we're gonna pop it in here where it's gonna live and just gonna put it in front of the fuel gauge because there's no warning lights there just so we clear the odometer button. Okay, very cool. All right, so now our wiring's already connected to our gauge, and we can just connect it up now and tuck it away and put the trim back on, and we're pretty much done. All righty, so let's just prep the wires. Awesome. Shoot some heat shrink down them. 
and then join them up. Lovely. So you can see I've already tied our loom up, snaked it through the cabin here, make it nice and tidy. So what we're going to do now is just wrap these both up. I think we can put that trim back on now. She's all back together. Oh, we better see what it looks like now and try it out. All right, so there it is. Let's see how it looks. All right, so it does an opening ceremony. Let's see if the backlight comes on. It does. Let's have a look at it in the dark. Yeah, not too bad. All right, cool. Well, I guess we better uh, see if it operates, eh? All right, guys, well, there it is, all installed. Looks really tidy. Almost looks like it belongs there. You can see there it's going up in temperature as the engine warms up, so it's all hunky-dory. So anyway, that's it for um, this episode. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, as always, uh, thank you for liking and sharing our uh, videos here on YouTube. And um, also make sure you jump on our Instagram, at Gossam Media, that's our handle. Uh, follow us there for some uh, behind-the-scenes stuff and, you know, bonus content and all that. And uh, anyway, make sure you catch us next time. I'm Nev, that's my garage, catch you later.